bullseye. Okay. I did it. This is everyone communicates, you connect. You'll see me on twice because my computer keeps bumping me out. So I switched over to my tablet. So anyway, here I am. Uh, We are talking about uh, communicating on a mastermind. And so I just want to give us a little welcome. Um, First of all, I want to find out where everybody is physically located for those that are listening to this later. I, and we're just going to hop around and say that I am in uh, the Columbus, Ohio area, Canal Winchester. I'm just right outside of Columbus. And I don't know what the temperature is, but we got some snow last night. Um, Sally, how about you? Do you know what the temperature is offhand? I don't, but it was warmer than yesterday. Okay. I have to tell you. (laughs) I mean, it's normal winter temperature, you know, and we did get a quite a bit more snow. So I'm just very close to Kathy in Canal Winchester. And Sherry? It is 28 degrees in eastern Pennsylvania. I am about 20 miles west of Ellentown. Okay. And And we are snowing. Okay. I am now in my dining room looking out at the beautiful snow and the cars going by very slowly. So Angela, how about you? I live in um, north part of Dayton, um, and it is cold, and it is 27 degrees outside with light snow. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Debbie, how about you? I'm in my library this morning. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> but I'm uh, just uh, south of Columbus, Ohio, and um, you were commenting on the uh, the weather, it's 28 degrees, but they've got a special weather report out for us in saying that um, the snow will continue, but there will be brief reductions in visibility and light accumulations. So that uh, so we need to uh, use extreme caution when you're driving. Well, I don't know about you, but I was out yesterday and I nearly froze to death. So I'm staying home today. So yeah, I'm not going anywhere today. <laughs> we were out looking at property last night. Yeah. So it was cold. It was very cold. Yeah. It's, sure. supposed, to go down, to it's supposed to go down to the minus digits tonight. Wow. Oh. Okay. I'm staying in today. Mason, Sherry, how about you? Where- Sherry, how close oh. are you to going to be to that nor'easter that's coming up? I'm in the middle of it. Ah, I was Great. wondering. <laughs> now, wow. um, actually, um, if I were another 45 minutes, I'd be getting a significant amount of snow. Right now, I'm on the edge of where it's about four, going to be four inches. Mm. Wow. So, I have a funny story about that. but um, So yeah. I don't even know. Uh, so I keep interrupting. I'm so sorry today. No, that's no okay. you're good. Matt and Kate are supposed to leave for Dubai tomorrow. Ooh. And it, so Ooh. everybody tested negative, the whole dance company, everything tested negative for COVID. Their flight was canceled because it's a snowstorm <laughs> coming in, <laughs> but they were able to get another flight out tomorrow night. So it's a direct flight to Dubai from New York. So that's good. But he said, I'll believe we're there when we're there, when we're in our hotel yeah. room, because it's been such are a they, Are they thing. leaving from, are they, uh, in, are they already in New York? No, they live in Connecticut. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they should go to, to New York of now. <laughs> yeah, they're supposed to, they're, it's starting in that area um, now at this point. So they need to get down into wherever they're going to be like now, because they're going to be in the meat of it. Yeah. yeah. By the weekend, by tomorrow. By tomorrow, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's been one thing after another with this trip, but I hope they, I hope yeah. they get there. Wow. Trying to get my laptop or my little tablet situated where I don't have to hold it. <laughs> okay. Who, who okay. else didn't introduce themselves? I'm very confused. Uh, we were lost. over to Mason. <laughs> Mason, well, tell I am us where actually, you are. I'm actually in Newark, Ohio, which is just east of Columbus. And it is 28-ish here, which makes it 36 degrees warmer than it was yesterday. And yeah. uh, actually, I came on late this morning because my daughter was on two-hour delay. So I just got done driving, came back, and ran down here to jump on a computer. Okay. Very good. So welcome, everyone. 
Um, I want to talk about uh, a little bit, uh, just an overview of uh, Everyone Communicates Q Connect. Um, first of all, connecting increases our influence in every situation. Experts um, say that we get about 35,000 messages a day. Can you believe that? 35,000? I kind of believe that. The sun is real bright here right now. So I, I, I look like I'm, you know, totally white, but <laughs> it's, it's okay. crazy. Um, most of us speak an average of 16,000 words a day. Um, if you actually counted that up, it would be a 300 page book every week. A 300 page book every week. That's a lot of words. So connecting can make or break you with your boss, with your children, with your friends, with your spouse. Connecting is the ability to identify with folks and relate to them. Relationships such as friends, neighbors, coworkers, your boss. And according to Harvard Business Review, the number one criteria for advancement and promotion is the ability to communicate. So that means connecting. So this group is twofold. Number one is we want to show folks how to actually run a mastermind as we actually run a mastermind. So we're showing you how to do it as we do it. So week number one is we want to set the framework of a mastermind and then we want to cover chapter one. Um, I guess session number one, whether if you're going to do a, it's usually five sessions. So you can do five months, five weeks, five days. It's however you want to do your five sessions. And so session one uh, is where we're going to set the framework. So the framework we're using is a zoom call. And again, it's, it's kind of good to have some problems when you're, when you're doing a zoom call, because that way, uh, you know, you're going to kind of troubleshoot it. Um, I'm having connection trouble with my internet. Um, Angela had trouble signing on today. Uh, Mason had a busy schedule and is trying to fit it in. And so he's jumping on a little later. So you can see where um, this is what happens whenever you do a, a, an actual mastermind networking call is you're going to have these kinds of issues. And so it's a good thing that we're having them right now. So we can learn how to navigate some of those issues. And so Angela sent me a message on my cell phone that said she was having trouble tapping in. And so as I'm getting booted out of the call, I'm trying to help her get into the call. <laughs> so, so you can see how all of that kind of works together. So it's all good. Um, so anyhow, our framework is Zoom and a lot of us have, have used Zoom for some time now. And so we're learning our way around Zoom. The fact that I'm on my tablet instead of my computer, I'm in the wrong part of the house. It's all windows here. So it's like way too bright. You can tell by how I look on the camera that it's just, you know, even if I back up from the windows, it's just way too bright right here, but it's okay. And also, uh, you know, as we're getting new backdrops, Mason's got his new backdrop up. Angela had hers up and now she's got the blur thing going on behind her. All of that's all good. You can change a lot of that and you can practice with some of that on your Zoom call. So as a presenter, you can come across, um, you know, the way you want to come across to your audience. And so that's good. Um, but then we're, we're just talking about, you know, how do you get folks over to your, um, your Zoom mastermind? And I use Meetup. I also use um, Facebook events and then just my social media. And as I built out my academy, I have quite a list of students, I'll call them students, in my academy. Some are just uh, tapping into oh, some cool. of my free calls, some are actually purchasing the courses, and some are tapping into the masterminds. And so um, Sally and I, we were just talking when we first came on today, that she really likes that I send out that weekly update announcement like here's what's coming up for the week. And it's just an easy way to save that email and you can tap into the links right from that email. So yeah. if you're in the Academy roster at some level, you know, if you've signed up over there on the Academy, you will get that weekly um, announcement that has all the links and, and all the dates and all the times and all that good stuff. So if you're not getting that, go to Kathy Binner International Academy .com and scroll down to all the free stuff that you want and, uh, and just make an account there. It just, it's, it's free. It's just gonna ask for your um, username and, and to create a password to create an account for yourself. And then you can actually go into the event. There's little um, you know icons all through the Academy where you can tap on the one that you want and it'll give you the dates, the times and the, e and the Zoom link. Or you can, once you register uh, there at the Academy, you will get my email. 
uh, at the beginning of every week. So we can do that two different ways. So chapter one and uh, Angela is going to be our facilitator this week. And she's going to guide us through uh, four points in chapter one. And the four points are finding common ground. So start thinking about, um, you know, how you might want to share on uh, an actual situation on how you found common ground. The second point is how to make your communication simple. The third one is capturing people's interest. And finally, the fourth one is being authentic. Um, and so think on those things. And in our Build a Better Business course and Mastermind, which many of you on this call are also in, we talk about storytelling. And in February, that's going to be our topic is all about storytelling. And Mason wants to be a storyteller. I just sent him some links yesterday on some storytelling uh, groups that he could uh, get involved in. Uh, he's quite the storyteller. I love his post. Um, but anyway, as we're talking about storytelling, dig down deep inside of yourself when you're trying to connect with people and come up with a story that you know it's your story, it's part of your story, and just come up with a story about how that relates to you, and folks will resonate with that. So that's just an easy way if you think, I don't know what to say, it's coming around to me, they're asking me to, you know, to weigh in on this particular topic, and so if you can relate it to a story that you experienced personally, it will help you in your answer. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Angela. And Angela, tell us just a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. And then I'll let you just jump right into leading us through these four points in chapter one of Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. Angela? Okay, good morning. And um, thank you for your patience. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yes, uh, my name is Angela. I, um, I'm originally from Alabama. Um, and I'm retired from um the military for um, like 28 and a half years i'm married i love adventure and um i actually got on um every everyone um every everyone communicates few connect because i wanted to start an organization and i wanted to um put myself just jump in basically and so I'm like, hmm, interesting. I like this topic. And so I just um, joined, um, I think back in March or so. So I'm just been learning so much um, about Zoom and about, um, you know, just just being vulnerable to the to technology in, in general. So so um, what about your you guys' background? Does anybody have a background in technology or fear the... Um, technology a little bit or familiar with Zoom at all? I had to struggle, Angela. I When I first started, I was sharing with Sally before we all got on this morning. I remember my first Zoom call, I had sweaty palms because I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what button to push. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> and I was so worried uh, about how I looked. And so I was like, okay, I got to have the face on. I got to have the hair done. And now I'm kind of like, okay, where's where? <laughs> now I'm just worried that my computer's going to bump me out. So um <laughs> Wow. It's, I think it's a growth. I think it's it's just a growth and you have to, um, I think you just have to practice. I think that's the key word is practice. That, yeah, that would the be more, a big point. Yeah. The more <laughs> Zooms you're on, the better. Um, but yeah, that's, that was my fear. How, how am I going to look? I just recently got to the point where I'm okay. That's how I look, you know. Um, I do put on makeup and stuff though. <laughs> Before soups, I even put on perfume. So, <laughs> Sally, you smell wonderful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, um, and it is a, a process. And actually, for those of us who um, are thinking about doing podcasts or were thinking about doing podcasts and YouTube things, Zoom is actually a godsend because Zoom and, and Clubhouse. Clubhouse gets you comfortable about speaking and nobody looks at you, they can't see you, but mm -hmm. Zoom gets you comfortable about being upfront and in front of people. Uh -huh. okay. So that's great. What about um, you, um, Debbie? 
Um, <clears throat> well, before I started doing Zoom, uh, you know, I was very nervous to some extent on getting the ability to uh, use my words, use my story to to and talk, use my expressions, and and it is a little a, a little scary, but. I don't know. It's like Sally and, and Kathy said, you know, once once you do it a couple of times, it becomes second nature and bless you. Thank and you. you don't um you don't think about it. And and I find that sometimes when I can't get in, it's like, what am I doing wrong? You know, <laughs> <laughs> why can't I get in? Because I want to be there. I, I, I want to see what's going on. I want to contribute. And uh, I, I just, I'm enjoying it now. In fact, you know, hey. instead of going to someplace and sit at a table with coffee, I would much rather do this because I'm, I'm comfortable and I'm relaxed and, and I can still do the same thing. Hmm. Great. great, great. You can wear sweats. Yeah. <laughs> I can have a nice shirt on, but who knows what the <laughs> um, you um Debbie, you you just um touched on something that I wanted to talk about and that was um you um I did I hear you say that um you um didn't like to talk? It, no, I I didn't. Mm -hmm. Um because honestly, mm -hmm. I felt like maybe I couldn't use my words correctly or I couldn't get my point across and being able to have one train of thought and, and be able to complete a conversation without uh, a loss for words. Mm -hmm. um, but now I, I don't feel that way, you know, not, not as much. Maybe sometimes when I'm in a setting of Zoom where I really don't know a lot of people, I still feel a little uncomfortable, but, you know, that lasts about two minutes and then uh, I'm good. <laughs> All right. What, what about you, Sherry? You're, you're on mute. So what about me? I'm a very distracted today because um, <laughs> I am not at home and I'm getting texts from everyone. Um, and and uh, so Michael's asking me about me being home at some point today and I'm going, uh, I don't know when that'll happen. Um, so <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm distracted, but I found Zoom made my transition into where I wanted to go in life so easy because I was able to connect with people that I would have never been able to connect with before. Now I can do a, and I tell this to all of my clients, I can virtually see a May 10th and a May 14th uh, dichotomy, uh, not a May, but March, um, dichotomy so on March 12th, 2020, yeah, that's when this whole thing started. Um, nobody would turn on their camera. By March 14th, <laughs> they knew they had to, and they did. So it was kind of crazy I because think. I was getting one or two people on, nobody would turn their camera on. I was the only one. I was like talking to myself still. Every once in a while, they'd interject and have a conversation. Now, thinking on my I can I can have a conversation with people. They're talking back to me, and I have changed lives all over the world with what I'm doing. And forgive me, goodness gracious, family. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> They're important, right? Thirty-five thousand well, messages a day. Well, yeah. So what's happening right now is I am staying here. My husband is at a 
out in Carlisle. My son is home alone. My daughter is in state college going to Altoona. And like, everybody's trying to give me updates as to what's going on right now. And I'm like, ah, and I'm also waiting for the doctor to call back about oh, the wow. situation here. So I'm sorry if I keep getting distracted, but that's where I'm at right now is like, everybody's texting me. And unfortunately I have to respond because of the situation that is happening today. I understand. But, <laughs> but <laughs> I was also distracted because I didn't realize what book we were using and I went into Kathy's uh, uh, teachable and I just ordered the book. I found a hard copy. I think it's a hard copy for $5 and 75 cents. Very nice. <laughs> so I, uh, it won't be here for another week, but I found a hard copy for five bucks <laughs> on wow. Amazon. So, um, so sorry, I was distracted. I got to hear some of you, but for the everyone communicates little connect i was not connecting well in this situation so forgive me for the distraction it's back to you angela okay thank you well um you know what i um this morning the, the um i was feeling like what was happening was such a negative experience and i was i go sweating and and um, things of that nature but um I came across a um, a saying, and I don't, I don't. His name is his first name is Curtis. I can't remember his last name, but you might know him as um, as a rapper called Fifty Cents. And it's amazing that I actually like flipped to this, and it's he said that um, every negative is a positive. The bad things that happen to me, I somehow make them good. And so I see that 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 today that just all um come on, all of us right now <laughs> and stuff. Everything that happened this morning in the last um couple of minutes, whatever, it it's all it's all good. And um so I'm gonna tell you a, a little story um about making something good and also about um Zoom in a sense that before Zoom, we were just um, face to face all the time, and maybe some people might have felt comfortable um, well, with Zoom now. But when I um, was working, even in my own personal life, I always, I was always quiet. I was always um, quiet. Not necessarily shy, but I'm a. I think I'm. I'm I. I just like to listen to people's stories. Uh, Mason, because you have some good stories, <laughs> some good stories. But anyway, um, decades ago, um, I had a son, and my son he 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 died, and he died at four years old, and I was um I was devast I was devastated, I was devastated, and he died of um all of a sudden he was um actually actually in fourth grade he was at um a daycare or, or preschool. I was in basic training when this happened. Um, when, I, when I got the notice that he um, had a seizure at school. And of course they rushed me um, from San Antonio um, to Alabama. But anyway, um, so he died a couple of days later from meningitis. Mm -hmm. And for the life of me, and um, I could not understand what was going on about, about the disease and all that kind of stuff. And, um, but, you know, you get through things and stuff because um, it, was, it was just, it was, it was, like I said, the, I can't even tell you, it was devastating to me. And I thought that the world was going to, um, to end. But you know what? Lo and behold, I'm talking about five years later or less, I had a coworker whose, whose son um, was sick and he had the flu, just like my son, you know, had the, you know, seemingly the the flu and um so i um my senses i, I guess like it became um really 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 um sensitive sensitive to little kids with the flu um so to speak and um so my coworker, his name is um eichenberry and um he was talking about his son has been sick for a couple of days and stuff and he had the flu and, and he couldn't get rid of it and everything then it went on for a week and i said to him i said um would you um 
to um, ask your wife, take them back to the doctor and just tell them to test for meningitis. And he's like, meningitis, what is that? I'm like, we can you just, um, just do it. He called his wife on the phone and, um, and stuff, she made an appointment. And that same day, since she said the word meningitis, they actually said, well, you know what, come on in here. So they um, tested him, he had meningitis. So with that being said, that negative that I was feeling all these years and stuff, the last five years and stuff, about, you know, not knowing what's going on and stuff. And um, that, my my senses, I, 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 my, I, they peaked. And I was able to be curious enough to, I, to, to, um, to expose, to tell my coworker, you know what, just go have him check. It, what's it gonna hurt? And so um, they said that I could, I could have very well saved, his name was Malcolm's life because they actually thought, the pediatrician thought that he had the flu, which is the same thing they thought that my son, my, my, um, my son had. So I have learned with, in all these years, I have, I've taken from that, that so-called negative ex experience. My positive thing that I've taken from that is um, to embrace my negative experiences because they really do turn out for the good once you understand understand uh, understand that um and um and i've just taken his life and i've i just made it you know um i just only focus on the positive things in um in life and in his his short life and stuff and and it, it it's just it's made my life worth living and I, um, I experienced more things, but my question is, the negative experience, is anyone willing to share? Angela, that is such a powerful story. Wow, very powerful story. Um, I too uh, didn't have anywheres near the experience that you've had. Um, number one, we have lost Mark's son. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was an adult, uh, 37, and, um, and, and we did lose his son, I'm going to say it's been maybe five years ago now. Mm -hmm. And that was a very traumatic time for us to go through. So again, it wasn't my son, it was Mark's son, and I did watch Mark go through all that. So I, I get the emotion that goes with that. And a year ago, I lost my partner in the Happy House Hunters group. Uh, mm -hmm. She was my uh, real estate agent friend that was very instrumental in the group. And I did turn, um, I did turn that as, as much as I could into a positive where I created the, the Stephanie Mila Jenkins initiative where, uh, it's a nonprofit. And I turned, I opened a nonprofit in her name and she loved real estate. And so I now, and I love education. And so I kind of married the two, the real estate and the education together. And I give out a scholarship every year uh, to folks that are trying to get their real estate license and need some help with the funding of their of their classroom work before they take their state boards. And so that's how I tried to turn uh, my situation into a positive. So thank you for that, Angela. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Would anyone else like to share about um, turning a negative into a positive? I no thoughts. Well, see, unfortunately, I, I really I have nothing to. You know, I've lost my parents, but other than that, I've not experienced um, what you've gone through. So, and I've learned over time. I don't try and pretend. I, I can't relate to what you went through, and I won't pretend. I won't insult you. Mm -hmm. to try and pretend I can. And I've learned over time that, and when someone goes through something that I have never experienced and I realize it's something genuine, if you will, mm -hmm. I will admit it. Look, I, I, I never been through, it. I can't relate to that. I it's, it's, and I don't, I, and so I, cause I don't want to diminish the person, um, what they've gone through in any way, shape or form. I mean, so in terms of personal tragedies like that, no, I mean, personal life experiences, but nothing to the nature of what you're, what you um, unfortunately have, have, have gone through, but it's it's amazing. It's wonderful how you're able to use that experience, and you've helped someone. You you've saved someone else by by that. So that's just amazing. Well, it's taught me also um, to speak up because, like I said earlier, 
I really um, was more of a listener and I, I love sitting in the background, just absorbing people's um, shares and, um, and, and their life. And um, so it, it, um, it just opened up my eyes and stuff and it gave me a voice, should I say, and stuff. And um, so, so um, I think that with that being said, um, we did find a, um, some common ground here, <laughs> um, um, basically. And and um, I also want to say that this that story um, is not um, it's not a sad story for me. I've told it before, and there were people crying, but um, it is um. It's not a sad. It's not a sad story um, for me. At one point, it was decades ago, but now it um it brings me joy, and I'm able to talk about it. So um I just want you to know that that is not a uh, um it's not sad. It um it just it just brings brings me joy that I can talk about it, and that I did save someone else's um son um and stuff. So. But I'm I'm glad we're able to um to find some some common some common ground in that, and with that being, <laughs> well, I was gonna I was gonna say by you being able to speak so vulnerably mm. and honestly, it does give people permission. It does. It gives people permission to know that they too can be vulnerable and honest. Um, it's it's difficult to be sincere like that. And, and the fact that you're willing to share something so vulnerable mm -hmm. is a great way of connecting with people more than you realize. Mm -hmm. um, people have all gone through their own types of tragedies, if you will. Everyone has, that's life. By you being able to articulate what you went through, you're giving them permission that they can articulate. And sometimes even that articulation may, be, may not be verbally, Mm -hmm. but maybe even just say it to themselves. So you're connecting on a very deep level by your willingness to share that. Um, you know, you're connected at a level that you may not even fully appreciate. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all had life experiences, but you're allowing us, you're, you're giving us permission, you're setting an example of, wow, I mean, you can see that. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's a very powerful thing you're doing. Well, thank you. I I never um, really thought of it like that, but thank you, um, Mason. I pr I appreciate that. I I really I really do and stuff. So, but like I said, um, it it um, and and have you ever had like um, like a a, a failure? Like maybe you um flunked a test for um for instance, or um, you know um. Because I flunked I flunked um several <laughs> several tests, but even in thinking about that. I've, I've learned that it's never really a failure. It's always a lesson. It could be something simple, like, you know, say like flunking a test. My, I have a, my granddaughter is going to, um, to law school right now. And she, her first exam, she flunked. And so she was um, dev devastated. And I just told her that very same thing. It's never a failure. It's always a lesson. And have you have you learned any have you guys ever um Sally have you ever learned anything from um that you thought um might have been like mm, man I sucked at that or <laughs> or um oh man I I like I, I messed that up that's that's a bomb <laughs> well I've been fired from a few jobs and, and those oh. that's always devastating at the time they always come at the wrong time of course mm -hmm. to be fired you know right. um and when you're when you're married and you're contributing to the household income and you know you have kids to raise being fired from a job is really can make a devastating impact on your income that can provide for your family <clears throat> but what i found is that it was kind of it forces me to regroup now I work for myself. I can fire myself, but, and <laughs> but it does force you to regroup and think, well, what, what did I do wrong? What can I improve about myself to go to the next job? And eventually, you know, I found jobs that um, were a, a perfect fit for me. Oh. That's what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> 
there's that, but there's been other jobs too. That before. <laughs> what, I've had many are, lives before this one. <laughs> uh, well, what are you doing right now? That I'm a travel agent. I have my own agency. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And I've been a travel agent for 15 years, but I was also a certified uh, appraiser, residential appraisal appraiser. I was co-owner with in a company with two other people. Um, before that, I worked for HER Realtors. You know, so I've been I've been doing several things, but when I and I worked for Sears, and I worked for I did house household cleaning or cabin cleaning. Mm -hmm. You know, so you do what you have to sometimes. <laughs> So it, it's, it seems like then you have um, actually found your authentic self. Yeah. So, so you're actually not kind of like not really working because um, when you love what you do, you can kind of say it's, I enjoy it so much. It's, I get up in the morning and I'm just like, oh, can't wait to um, can get started because um, you might feel that you're, it's not really um, a job. It's, you know, it's who you are. It's who I am, but it's a job. So I'd love to validate <laughs> that. If you love what you do, it's not, you're not working. <laughs> I, I don't, <laughs> it is working. But, but it's not a hobby either. It's not a hobby. No, it's not, it's a, not hobby. a hobby. <laughs> so there, there is that. So yes, I, and this is a company that my life, husband and I created together. Mm -hmm. So when he died, um, it was, I, I kept going to to honor his legacy. Oh. So. Kind of, kind of like what I'm with Kathy did then. Steph, to honor somebody's, um, your co-worker. Yes. Life. Okay, fan, fantastic. Mason, have you ever um, had a, um, a, a, um, a, a failure that was, you thought you something you thought was a failure, and you learned of um. He's, he's like, I mean, you learned a, a lesson from or an experience that you learned if, a lesson from. If they say we learn from our mistakes, I should be the brightest guy. <laughs> um, Mason, that's funny. <laughs> it's only funny because it's true. Um, <laughs> oh, I love that. I've made so many many mistakes, and. Um, what I've learned from those is, no, what I'm learning from those is not to abuse myself too much. And I still do that. Um, <laughs> the storytelling you reference, my writing are all based on, I'll be honest, ladies, my writing is stuff either I'm going through, mm -hmm. have gone through, or I know someone close to me who's going through it. There's a reason I write and, and, and my writing, my storytelling has changed. I write a really good business report. You, you, you ladies would love it. My business reports are factual, clear, concise, to the point, and dry as the Sahara Desert. <laughs> well, they are. They're absolutely uninteresting. <laughs> what I've learned, though, what I enjoy more, and, and how I deal with my mistakes and my issues is my writing. Um, and I use that to help me to learn, if you will, to be retrospective. Um, so, and then to be willing to, you know, I share my vulnerability in a different way than you do, but I've learned that from my mistakes, I share that because that helps me. Mm -hmm. And then I have found it helps others, even if they laugh at me, at least they're recognizing they're not alone because mm -hmm. I'm not that unique. The mistakes I make, we've all made mistakes like that, but if I'm willing to share them, one, I take the pressure off me being the only guy in the room like, eh. You know, and, and I allow someone else to realize that. And, and um, that that's what I've learned from mistakes I've made and, and, and things I go through and like that. So. I, I love that because you do have to, um, I think that you do have to um, be able to, to laugh at yourself and um, don't take your, um, yourself so serious. And then your, your stories, they'll help, uh, they'll help um, other people. So I, um, I'm looking forward to it myself, <laughs> getting getting your your um your stories out out there. I really am. So um, I um I think that we um found some um some common ground, and even um some 
interest also in um in, in talking about these um certain things um this this morning is there um anything that anyone else wants wants to sh um to share well mason I, um, I like that comment that you put up in chat that um says failure is the mother of success that from the singer pitbull i heard that <laughs> This morning, as I was when I drive, I listen to I'll listen to oh. YouTube music in the background, right? And and so I'm driving after I drop my daughter off because, of course, not to her, she doesn't want to listen to it. But you know, you're getting a long line of cars trying to get out of the school parking lot, and I just put on my motivational thing. And I heard him say that this is the singer Pitbull. Okay, right. <laughs> he actually has a lot of good stuff out there, and his comment was. Failure is the mother of success. And I thought that was just the mm -hmm. coolest. And the guy's expressing a clear, articulate manner, you know. So when you talk about the, the singer 50 Cent, I mean, these guys are creative geniuses, okay? I don't have to like or enjoy that genre of music. That's irrelevant. It's their message. The message is what's important. They're trying to get out a message. And uh, so I thought that was just, when you said that 50 Cent, I said, you know what? Here's another singer, and it just happened this morning. So. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I, I um, like 50 Cent and with Pitbull is something I would really, I could not actually imagine coming out of their their mouth and, and their mind, actually. But you know what? You just, you never know. That would be um um just, you know, that's fantastic. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Now, um, I'm gonna say something. I am um, doing this call right now. I, I um, this Zoom call. I at first I was apprehensive about about being authentic and being um self out there because first I didn't want it to um to make anybody de get anybody depressed. <laughs> And like I said earlier, it's not a um, depressing um, story. It's it's my it was um it's my life, and this this is one this is one piece of my life. And um and secondly, I um but I wanted to be authentic. I wanted to um, share something, and um that was authentic and that would also open up my audience, you you guys and stuff, to seeing things um, differently and, ex and I'm just exposing my heart basically on something that I am, um, that I um, feel, I just feel, I'm just, I just feel really um, strongly ab about. And that is children because children can't, they don't have a voice, they can't speak for themselves. And they really don't know how they feel when they are sick. So it's up, you know, so I just um I um I just feel that is it's my responsibility um to open my mouth from now on about things when I when I hear things um like that. So and I just wanted to just um put myself out there and just jump. <laughs> And so I, I appreciate you, um, you guys um, sharing and listening to my story and also for um, exposing yourselves as, as, as well. So don't be afraid. Angela, you did a great job. Thank people you. Want, people want to, they want permission, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and don't be afraid if it's your story, if it's you, don't be afraid to explain it. OK, they don't have to get it right now. OK, they may not be able to relate or connect to it right now. Um, right. I had a conversation this week with a gentleman because it's given another group. You know, I tend to be I try and be a happy guy. Not always, but I try and be a happy guy. And the question came for the group was, for those who are happy, why are you happy? OK, do you understand why? And I had to explain to a gentleman my reasoning to put and I say this unabashedly. In 2017, I got, basically, I got scapegoated and lost a job. 50 years old, first time I'm out of work my entire life. 
and things went really downhill that year. And I tried to maintain a positive attitude. And I remember family members chewing on me. Why are you so happy? I don't mean polite. I mean, chewing on me because <laughs> I had every right and reason to be pissed and angry. Right. No, I said, I'm going to be happy for two reasons. One, my daughter, mm-hmm. I, I want to come through this and not have be the evil view. Okay. Mm-hmm. And if that is too much sunshine and roses and unicorns for you, let's look at the other side. Men are more, men are four times more likely to commit suicide. Ooh. You factor in age, you factor in job loss, it's 80 plus percent. We're four times more likely. I've lost a friend to suicide. I will not go down that path. I'll share that, okay? This is not meant to be depressing. Those are ugly facts, but those are facts. Depre- but share it. it. It lets people see you, who you are. They may not get it, but at least they know where you're coming from. By you sharing yourself, you connect on so many levels and you literally, and I've said this is the fourth time, <laughs> you're giving them permission. No, no, I, I, I repeat myself a lot. That's a bad habit of mine, but sometimes I, I point it out when it's on purpose. Mm-hmm. You're giving them permission to connect. You're giving them permission to connect back. They may not take it. Oh, no, but you're giving, you're opening the door for them. You know, and you're giving them permission, and that's a good thing. Thank you. Because so. I'd, I'd like to add to that. Sometimes it's it's just that one person that is going through something that your story really resonated with them, and if it makes a difference just for that one person, it was worth the share. And uh, and sometimes Absolutely. you know we 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 don't know that our story even landed anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, we share yeah. and everybody else shares and, you know, but I can tell you all kinds of stories that have been huge mm-hmm. in my life and in my journey. And um, I'm, I'm sure that some of those folks don't even know that what they said made a difference. You know, you might hear a speaker or whatever, and it really resonates, but you never quite get around to telling them how much their story resonated with you. So mm-hmm. uh, I think we have to be comfortable with being authentic. And, um, and, and again, I'm back to the beginning when I started the group off today is I think practice is the key. I think the more that you tell your story and here's something that I just heard on another call earlier this week, and it really resonated with me. And she said, I want to share my scars, not my pain. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. I yeah. want to share my scars, not the actual wound or the pain. Uh, because sometimes the wound and the pain is a little too much for your audience. But when you're sharing the scars, you're kind of sharing the story after the fact on how it, how you turned a negative into a positive. And so anyway, we never know how much we're going to resonate with other folks. And so I just think it's very important to be authentic. Yes, Debbie. Excuse me. I have to go. I have a phone call I have to make. So. <laughs> Angela, you did a great job. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Bye, Sally. Take care. Bye. Have a good weekend, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Mace, can I add, Mason, I want to add to your story where people were saying, um, you know, why aren't you mad and blah, blah, blah. And you made the comment about you were thinking of your daughter. Well, isn't it true that when your daughter looks at you and your reactions to the fact that you did not get mad, you did not seek revenge, that picture of contentment and and not getting mad, that leaves an impression on her so that when something should happen to her, she's going to remember that you did not get mad and 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 you were okay with it you you were laughing or whatever in you front were talking about it <laughs> trust and, me i wasn't okay with it and i have i agree with, yes and that was actually my intent that was my intent was to lay it gave me something bigger than myself to try and lay the seeds for um, right trust me i was hurting very badly and I was lucky. I had two friends who I could call anytime they saved me. 
but around them. And it's just the, the point is not so much my story. That's that's really not the issue. It's mm -hmm. it's the it is uncomfortable to be vulnerable. OK, mm -hmm. but to connect, you want to be vulnerable on some level. OK, mm -hmm. whether I make a joke, like realize, OK, and we're still recording. That's I'm going to say this earlier, Kathy, <laughs> you made a comment and I just kind of covered my face because my thought was a man cannot say that. You said, wow, Sally, you smell good. <laughs> I will tell you right now, there is not a guy in the world that could say that comment and not get in trouble. And I just shook my head. Just having fun with it, okay? Just having fun with it. And and it, it's it's that people want that. They want to know they can connect with you. They want to know they're allowed to connect with you. You know, I do make fun of myself a lot of times. Sometimes it's genuine, sometimes it's just being whatever, being dumb. But I do that because I'm trying to create that opening for somebody. Okay. And Angela, when you did that on your topic, uh -huh. you created your opening. Mm -hmm. When you, on the connection, you said, I was in the service. I literally wrote down my notepad. Okay. What service was she in? And then you said, Lachlan, so boom, I'm good. I knew, <laughs> you know. But you made that comment and you made that connection by putting that point out there, by putting the vulnerability out there, by putting your past out there. It's a way to help people connect, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is what this is all about. It's, it's that part. Mm -hmm. And then your vulnerability, your vulnerability will enhance. I'm not sure the best adjective in this case. It will enhance your chance to communicate with someone. Remember, mm -hmm. to yes. go with Kathy's stats, mm -hmm. only so much is received in. I hear words all the time. I hear words all day long. I only remember this many of them. Mm -hmm. By you being vulnerable, that may be pay more attention to what you were saying. Oh, okay. You know, it it did. You know, and as a as a as a parent, I mean that's important. But even if I wasn't a parent, I have friends who have kids. Right. You know, so that story goes to to not just parents. But to anyone who has a, you know, anyone who can relate to or connect with someone who has kids. Mm -hmm. So that willingness to share yourself is huge for connecting and then allowing the communication to occur. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. I want to jump in and say, I, I think Angela did a wonderful job. She found common ground. Uh, she made her communication very simple because she used a story, storytelling. And she definitely captured our interest. And with what her story actually was, uh, was very authentic. So she hit all the points and she encouraged all of us to share in telling our stories to hit all the points as well. So Angela, well done, Thank well you. done. So your very first well. session was very good and very well done. And so I know folks have lots to get onto um, this later this day. So I just want to, uh, again, I'm, I'm a little at a disadvantage working on my tablet here. <laughs> I'm holding it because I don't have any way to hold my tablet so, <laughs> instead of working on my computer. So anyway, but thank you for understanding uh, our, our kind of our, our uh, wobbly start that we had this morning, but it's good experience for all of us. Uh, it's good to, to run into some of those issues uh, because we know that we can persevere and, and get through it on the other side and still uh, get done what we wanted to get done today so does anyone have any um closing comments for angela before we go for me it's well done thank you well done um what branch of the service were you in air it was air force mm -hmm. air force oh, yes ma'am <laughs> yeah. i have uh um uh, actually uh Two nephews were in the Air Force, and then I had uh, three people that were in the so, the Navy. So oh. thank you for your service. And I want you to know Thanks. you did a great job today. And um, I'm just curious, what is going to be next month's topic, which I'm kind of lost in the book. I'm not sure. We do, we do chapter one, and then we do chapter two because the book is divided kind of in half. And so the first half is the first six chapters. So we do chapter one and chapter, or I guess maybe the first five chapters, there's 10 chapters. So we do chapter one and two, and then we move on to chapter six and seven, and then we finish it out at chapter nine. Yep. And that way we condense the whole book into five sessions. Gotcha. So what's gonna be next month? 
chapter two. two. Chapter two. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That is awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and thank you for being here.